Hello. <laughs> yes. Hi, Mildra. Thank you very much for having me. Um, I'm very glad to be here. I'm honored and uh, looking forward to, uh, for the uh, talk. <laughs> yes, I think uh, the humble beginnings are always uh, interesting. Um, let's say uh, role play. Um, it depends. How do you uh, define role play? Like, do you use um, do you count like the video games, like the computer games, console games, role play games, or uh, do you only um, talk about like the pen and paper role play games? Because um, yeah, because for me it was like um, I have started with the uh, console uh, role playing games. Um, I think my first uh, experience with the role play game was. Um, maybe like Final Fantasy Legends 2, which is a Game Boy game. Um, and uh, at first I was uh, a bit uh, yeah, surprised and um, flabbergasted because it was like, uh, it was unlike uh, other Game Boy games or video games I've played before. Like you couldn't like uh, run around and jump on on the enemies or, or sh shoot uh, shoot bullets or something like that. Um, it was like top down. You walked, uh, you had dialogues with NPCs, then you, you left town, suddenly then there's an encounter and the screen changes and then there's this, uh, this turn-based, uh, command-based uh, combat screen and uh, Child me was like, well, what am I supposed to do now? What is this? <laughs> so so different, actually. <laughs> but yeah, I got a hold of it, I think, uh, after a while, and I really liked the uh, the nice graphics, like the nice uh, creature sprites that were so big and and detailed uh, for the Game Boy. And uh, once I understood how to to win the battles, like how to select the commands and what to do. Um, I, I started really enjoying it, and uh, I played uh, through the whole game, like um, beat all the bosses and collected items and had really fun. I think uh, maybe that was uh, me at age, uh, like I was very young, um, grade school or something like that. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so I think that was my very first encounter with the role play games as a, as a genre. And um, my first uh, encounter with the uh, pen and paper games uh, was like several years later, like maybe when I was about, uh, let's say, um, maybe 18, only 17, or earlier. That's a bit, I can't really remember, but um, I knew, I know that I played uh, a lot of. Uh, Earth Dawn. I think my first yes, I think my first one was like a role playing game called Earth Dawn and uh, Shadow Run, and uh, I played that with friends, and later um, switched to uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, everyone knows, <laughs> and um, had like uh, very fun adventures uh, in this role playing system. But uh, parallel to this, I always. Um, Played like the video games, the video role play games for consoles like uh, Super Nintendo and uh, PlayStation, etc. Like, uh, especially liked um, Chrono Trigger, for example, it was a great role playing game for the Super Nintendo, Super Famicom, and um, even even the uh, game Mystic Quest which is a bit infamous. <laughs> I even enjoyed that. I thought it was like really cute and fun and uh, amusing. <laughs> and especially the music was uh, very thrilling. Um, and yeah, uh, fun fact about the, the uh, 
Chrono Trigger role playing game. Um, when I was young, I was like very poor, and I could only afford like a black and white TV. Like I, th I think I got it for free or for like very cheap because it was black and white, and it was like a very a super old thing. And I remember playing Chrono Trigger. Uh, on that black and white TV, which uh, was all good fun and games until I uh, got to uh, f um, end boss like a, or like a big boss enemy called I think Majors. He, he became he would become a party member later if he, if you manage to beat him. But um, in his battle, there um, I mean I I fought. Uh, as good as possible with my party. However, he never died for some reason. And uh, it was always my party that got defeated. And only uh, some time later, when I got a color TV, I realized that some of the attacks I was uh, dealing against Majors were actually healing him instead of dealing damage, <laughs> which was the whole problem why he never died. <laughs> it was like a really dumb thing. But yeah, that's. Uh, it's a problem with a black and white TV, I guess. Um, well, you can't really say recent per se, but it took quite a while until the idea for Ataraxa Legend uh, for this project uh, formed. Um, I did make like one or two other roleplay attempts before that, but just like um, just just for fun, just very small uh, ideas and small concepts that I played with some friends. Um, nothing to write home about, definitely not. Uh, anything that can be compared to Ataraxia, because Ataraxia, um, that's an idea that formed uh, about the time when I played the uh, Korean MMORPG uh, Ragnarok Online, if uh, that rings a bell. Um, it was like this beautiful uh, semi-2D semi pixel-based uh, role-playing game. Um, where you uh, create your own character or select your own yeah, character and then choose classes and stuff like that. And uh, I really love this and I wanted to, um, to play this or something similar in a different medium. I want to bring this also in a different medium. And then I, so I thought um, I should really start to uh, create like this whole world because like uh, in Ragnarok Online, there was also this whole world and the lore and everything was really nice and impressive. And I thought, okay, I have to do something similar. Um, however, uh, with my own twist and uh, with uh, everything I like about uh, Japanese role-playing game in this case, like uh, the, the classics and uh, the old mechanics, etc. And so I started to. Um, um, yeah, write my first line <laughs> of the lore and uh, basically went from there. Ah, yes, <laughs> so I've heard. Ah, I never read it. <laughs> yes, I think you could say that. Um, 
certainly. Maybe some of the uh, PlayStation 1 era, era too. Um, but yeah, that's that's about sums it up pretty well. Okay, great question. Um, so it is a mm, relatively combat-heavy games game, at least uh, potentially. So um, I choose to go for um, two um, different uh, kind of um, say uh, attack or or, or mm, action rules like. Um, to, to put it in words easily, um, like there's the uh, normal attack, uh, which is rolled with a one-sided, uh, no, six-sided die. And um, uh, wait, how to explain it? <laughs> it's difficult to put in words. But OK, say um, there's the attack stat, OK? And uh, this stat is only used for normal attacks. Uh, so it is not used for any skills. It is only used for uh, the so-called normal attack or, or base attack, uh, also called attack combo. Um, it starts with a, with a one six-sided dice. However, um, as you level up, you can uh, invest um, boost points in the uh, number of dice, so the, the number, how many dice you want to have, or in the sides of the dice. So um, you can have a six, uh, seven-sided dice. Of course, that doesn't exist in pen and paper. So you would uh, roll the, still roll the six-sided dice and uh, say plus one, like the result that you rolled is plus one. Um, same with like uh, D9 doesn't exist, so you would just say. It's I roll the d8 and uh, the result is plus one, so you get a little bonus on your hit. Um, and the maximum amount of dice you can have is uh, five. And whenever you put uh, a boost points in the sides of the dice, it automatically counts for every uh, attack of this combo that you use. For example, uh, yeah, you you put only one point in. Um, in the six, so it's a seven, and then you have, and for example, you put uh, four points in the number of dice. Uh, suddenly, you can ro uh, you can roll five six-sided dice, and each one gets a plus one uh, to hit to surpass the opponent's uh, guard class, and uh, boom, you have like very nice chances to uh, to deal damage to your opponent. Um, and yes, that's uh, to um, to say the, the 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 guard class. This is uh, something that is uh, inspired from D and D, maybe other games too. The guard class is uh, similar to the AC in D and D. It was called the armor class. Um, in Ataraxia, it is specifically for uh, evasion and um, attention. Like those are uh, those two uh, concepts are uh, implemented in this one um, value. So uh, the other uh, dice system is for rolling skills. Like um, if you want to execute a skill, you roll with uh, six-sided dice only. Um, there are skills and. Um, when you have a skill, or when you yeah, when you basically when you bought a skill, say you have this skill at level one, so you have one six-sided dice to try activate it or to perform it. Um, if you level up, you can also use the boost points um, to improve your uh, skills, like separate skills. So, for example, you put uh, 
you boost your um, your running skill, for example, to run, to sprint. Uh, so you get it from one six-sided dice to two six-sided dice. So you can roll uh, roll those two and you add the number, like the result, and um, that's the, the end result that counts. Um, the important part here is that uh, skills are generally only used, uh, only rolled with the six-sided dice. Um, there may be one or two exceptions to this rule, but really the vast majority of skills only does have six-sided dice, and you cannot uh, improve the size as the sides. It's always six sides, and the uh, maximum level of each skill is usually uh, five, with some exceptions, but usually it's five. Um, it is a setup with um, where you where you basically, uh, for lack of better words, uh, you buy packages. Like each job is a tiny package, and you can have up to five jobs. So up to five to those uh, tiny packages that are filled with uh, up to three skills. So you just combine those five, and then you have the character you want. You can you can combine. Uh, necromancer package with a priest or healer package or anything you want so it is really up to you Each package contains up to three skills, and it's uh, really just um, action skills. I'm not saying they are all offensive attack skills or anything, but they are all skills that uh, can be executed with six-sided die. Um, let's say, for example, um, you buy the ninja uh, job package, um, then you have the uh, the run it, it provides you with the run skill, so the sprint skill, the um, like the and a kind of agility skill. I don't know the word right now, but yeah, and uh, ah, athletics. It's a uh, sprint, athletics, and a critical blow. So sprint and athletics are uh, skills for obviously for s s generating speed uh, in situations. Like running, sprinting, escaping, uh, following an enemy, uh, yeah, uh, running behind an enemy uh, that wants to escape, or um, stuff like that. Um, uh, athletics is something in between. It can be used uh, for a similar actions as sprint. However, it also pr provides um, a boost and attack power if character's uh, guard class is low or somehow got lowered for the moment then you get a, like, a little boost a boost in attack power and damage and critical blow or critical hit um, is an attack it's just a, a kinda what you'd expect um, as ataraxia per se the system does not have uh, random critical hits as uh, other role-playing games. Um, Daraxa does have the skill critical hit, uh, which where you decide when you want to land a critical hit, and this skill, of course, it cannot use like all the time. There are some rules to it, but yes, you can uh, you can use that skill. Can deal a lot of damage under ideal conditions. And um, that's a, a nice starter thing to have. Like 
uh, if you want to make a character that it can deal high damage at a very low level, then you probably use this uh, ninja package for the assassin skill alone. do still play a role as you develop, very importantly so, because um, when you create your character, you only have, um, that's only a creation feature, uh, 10 educational years, uh, so-called 10 educational years. Um, those get converted into skill points for the various skills, uh, and they are different for every skill in, in, in each job. So some skills, for example, require uh, the character to study like one full year. So that means you, you spend one full year and you get one level in skill X. Uh, other skills are easier to learn. And for example, there's a skill that only uh, costs a half a year to get a skill level in that uh, category. So you only have to subtract half a year from those 10 years and get a level in that skill. Some skills are even super easy to learn <laughs> and they only cost um, one quarter of a year to get one level in this skill. So you can spend only a quarter of the year for, for one level or you can spend a whole year and you have that skill already at level four even though you yourself are only a level one character. Um, and uh, as you play and level up, you know, gain, gain experience, level up, etc., each level up uh, provides you with a boost, with two boost points, and you can spend those boost points either on your character's stats, like uh, their, their health or their uh, attack or their uh, power, their natural power, their magical power, their mana, uh, or their, their guard class, or you put them into skills, either skills that you haven't learned yet, that you haven't developed yet, or into skills that you want to perfect. However, in this case, the, um, the, the, the year rule doesn't count anymore, uh, because from there on, on, from there on, on uh, each boost point is really just a one point. Uh, in any case, you just boost to one point point. That's a great. That's a great question. Um, I think um, it was like purely like <laughs> a strike of creativity. I wanted to make something a bit different. I wanted to make a, a little, little fun little system behind that uh, for the character creation, and uh, also wanted to explain like a little bit of. What could the characters have done before the adventure begins? What could be their uh, their uh, story? Um, what were they into? What did they learn? Um, or did they, their parents maybe sent them to to do to to, to study this or to, to learn that? And um, yes, it also um, goes hand in hand with the uh, the lore, like a little bit at least, um, because. There, is, there are like educational systems in Ataraxia, but they are not like, uh, usually not like schools, but rather um, the characters uh, stay in uh, or, are, or are like guests uh, at, uh, how do you say in English? <laughs> um, at certain institutions, I'd say, if that makes sense. And they, they learn there and they study there. And um, their parents usually pay money for that and so that they, uh, 
youngsters uh, can learn uh, the trades. <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> you select uh, jobs that you want and the only thing that um, like uh, is similar to a class or, or comes close to a, something like a final class would be the guilds um, but no character is really uh, forced to join any guild uh, joining a guild just brings you uh, just provides you with one or two additional extra skills that are guild specific and uh, also you just have the um, the connect connection with that guild so with the NPCs from there uh, with the other similar guilds uh, in the world um, they open opportunities for for, for quests maybe um, and um, yeah so that's basically the only thing that uh, ties you to some cons some strict in in quotes uh, concept for your character for example be it uh, the um, be it a, th a thief guild uh, or a uh, priest guild cleric guild which is basically a church or um, magician guild obviously very important for uh, characters that want to use uh, magic to their full potential, that, that want to use magic like uh, more than once uh, per battle, they would uh, really have to join the Magician's Guild because this is where you learn to cast uh, a spell every second round instead of only one uh, spell per battle. Um, as a casting spells is very taxing in this world, however it does not cost any magic points or anything like that. It is just very taxing uh, ability to have. So the only uh, way to do it is to cast uh, either if you're not trained once per battle or um, every second turn because you need one turn in between to recover uh, magical energy that you need to uh, cast out a spell again. Um, so yeah, and sometimes there are like small loopholes uh, to it. Like for example, um, there is a so-called amulet of spellcasting, like a magical artifact that you can have. So whoever wears this artifact can also use the spellcasting skill that you usually only use uh, learn in the magician's guild uh, without being in a magician's guild. So. That's a little workaround if you uh, think your character deserves or, or finds a amulet of spellcasting. But it, again, it's a very rare and super expensive item, so it's questionable, of course. Okay, um, that's a great, another great question, great fun. Um, the monk archetype is a fun build, I'd say. It's a build that wasn't there from the very beginning, uh, like in the, the first year or the first two years uh, of creating Ataraxia. There was no way to really have fun with a weaponless brawler and as far as I see it, monks are known to be like uh, weaponless brawlers, like they usually fight with their hands and, and, and feet, etc. Um, so there had to be some changes. Some changes, some changes had to be made. 
<laughs> and some new editions had to be created. And uh, after some time, like maybe uh, it took like two more years of development until uh, the game world and setting and concept was really um, balanced enough to add a, a weaponless fighter, like a very a good weaponless fighter, a good monk in that. So uh, what you do now is, um, first thing you do is you check out the, not the jobs actually, but rather the scroll skills. Scroll skills are um, additional bonus skills that you can buy in monastery uh, to to learn special abilities that are not included in jobs in job packages, like they're not they're a whole other thing. You can learn up to five of them because they are very, uh, very unique and, and quite powerful if if done right, actually. So you you check the straw skills and you would look and uh, there's like a lot of them, but you'd look which one you think you want for your uh, monk, which one uh, serves them best on their journey, um, and you would look. Uh, what are the conditions to even learn that skill? Because not everyone can learn every every skull skill, so you have to check out. Okay, what are the conditions for that one? That one? That one? You just uh, maybe make some notes, and then it, when you know all the conditions and all the scroll skills you want in the future, then you go to the uh, jobs and you select the jobs that you'd uh, that contain the skills that that you'd need to use the scroll skills later on in the adventure. So you you already think ahead, like, um, use, like, l l lots of nice uh, jobs, and then you put your character into a, um, a monk guild, like a monastery. Because, yes, that exists, and um, there are some conditions you need to fulfill to should be part of that uh, of a monastery, but you obviously you uh, look which ones uh, those are, and um, when you've done that, your character uh, will have an, ad uh, an additional power boost, like a strength boost, if he fights uh, without a weapon and uh, without armor. He is also not allowed to wear armor because when he wears an armor or when he uses a weapon, the power boost is gone. Um, however, when he drops the weapon, uh, drops the armor, the power boost is there again, no problem. Um, you'd also uh, do you research uh, into gloves because uh, there are two two or three kinds of gloves that count as uh, weaponless. And uh, if you get some of those, maybe even upgrade them later in the game, you can make them even more powerful. Uh, you can um, like enchant them with uh, elements, uh, etc. So yeah, you can do uh, have a lot of fun with gloves. Um, and uh, monastery and uh, the scroll skills later, and you can have like the very, very interesting um, brawlers, very interesting weaponless uh, fighter. Um, and not only in one direction, like there are many different directions you can go with your uh, weaponless fighter. Because, um, yeah, yeah, there's just the limitation of five scroll skills, but there are more scroll skills that relate to weaponless fighting now, so that uh, each uh, weaponless fighter can really look different right now. For example, there's like techniques that are um, like uh, in kung fu movies, uh, like ju just like great punches and kicks and whirlwind attacks and crazy stuff. And there are also like throws that are more like um, like in judo or, or or wrestling or stuff like that. Like there are uh, capture and and throw techniques. Uh, very that only work in specific specific conditions. However, when they work, they deal a very large amount of damage, and they're very fascinating to to watch, of course. Mm, and there are also skills that allow you, uh, as the monk, to um, to de how do you say in English uh, to de arm 
your opponent? Is that what you say? This arm. This arm, yeah. Like there are ways to disarm opponents so that you're basically on an equal uh, battlefield. Uh, however, of course, you have the upper hand if the enemy doesn't have their arm. So <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's more leaning towards you when you uh, manage to disarm your enemy. And uh, yes, he has a lot of fun stuff to do for a monk, I think. There is no real uh, thematic line. The only different difference really is that uh, the scroll skills are all skills that are that cannot be found in um, in jobs. That's pretty much the only difference there is. are uh, how can I say callings uh, are a really each calling is one big bundle uh, which you cannot um, cannot get an additional job uh, to that you can only have this one bundle for example um, there are um, there's the uh, one calling is just simply called rider, and oh yes, that's an, that's another interesting difference between callings and a uh, and a job combinations. Like I think uh, one of the main differences is that callings always um, can create something um, something tangible in some way, like some something physical. We can basically create something. Uh, so the callings of Ataraxia are, um, for example, writer. It sounds super not spectacular, <laughs> just being a writer, but writer is an actual calling in Ataraxia and one that you can take to battle too, actually. So <laughs> that is uh, very surprising. Same with... Um, Oh, how's it <laughs> Wait, 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 I have to uh, check the name in English to not uh, tell you something wrong. Um, I always forgot that one. I always forget that one. <laughs> that one in English. I, I have it, I have it. Um, well, excuse me, confectioner was the one. Like, the other one is confectioner. Um, but there are also um, callings like blacksmith and um, dragoon and uh, stuff like that. Yeah. Yes. Yes, you are correct there. Um, the skill is called uh, spellcasting, uh, no, not spellcasting, elemental magic. Yes, it's, uh, elemental magic is the skill, and it's uh, in the um, magician drop package, so to say. And um, just as in any other skill, you can level it up with uh, boost points, or from the beginning, you just put in as many years, as many points that, as you want, until five, that's the maximum. And um, you uh, you have to roll the six-sided die in order to successfully execute uh, like a magic spell. Um, 
in this case you don't uh, attack the enemy's uh, guard class directly uh, but instead you roll against the spells um, number like this. There's, there's a number that has to be reached uh, from each spell, a, a value of each spell that has to be uh, reached with this roll. And yeah, if you if you successfully uh, reach it or are over, and the spell uh, is executed, and um, the target will be attacked by that magic. Um, if it's under, then it's uh, it's a fail, and nothing happens. Um, the player's choice of race uh, is um, affects the character mainly in uh, their uh, special uh, race-specific uh, skill. Um, some races even get more than one race-specific skill that they have. Um, others only get one. And um, aside from that, only the... Uh, the culture, like the backstory, and uh, and the place in the world. Yes, um, that is exactly what it is. Like um, it is, <clears throat> it is a way for um, if you have a cre if you want uh, some kind of character that uh, even though you checked all the races of Ataraxia and you can't find one that you you want to play or that you specifically like, you can basically like make up your own or or make one that you, that you like. And it will be simply categorized as a, a half demon. And um, yes, you just uh, you also just select the skills that you want. You pick them, and you pick the um, uh, the weak spot uh, they will have, or the weakest part they have. And um, this way, you can have basically anything you want in the game. Um, it also means that. This character is usually is like um, it's just like a, a kind of oddity. Uh, they are not uh, creatures or monsters, so they don't um, really uh, transform into cell when they're dead. Um, but they're not conventional uh, races either. So one usually says uh, they're maybe from a a lost uh, minority that has. Uh, has not been seen for for decades, or that has not been seen for eons, but still exists somewhere in the world. And this way, you can explain uh, your character. Yes, that is how it is. Like uh, you collect uh, experience points um, via play time, uh, action, and uh, battles, like defeating enemies. Um, you level up at certain uh, XP levels, and um, each level up, you your character receives uh, two uh, boost points to um, 
boost any skill or stat they want. Um, however, there is also uh, the option to or the possibility that uh, one of your fellow players, um, for example, has mastered a certain skill or, or is master is master of a certain skill or, or, or job, and uh, they can, in time, like in play, uh, teach your character the first point, like the first level of a certain skill that you want to learn. Um, however, it's it can't uh, surpass like your the the maximum of jobs that you have like the, the five the five job limit still stands so um it can only be like something that from a job that you also already have but you just have not invested any points there yet so you go to your friend and your friend explains how it works and you then boom your character gets a, a skill level there and um when you buy scroll skills um, then the scroll skills also usually uh, start with level one, so you, they already come with the first level implemented. You already know it after reading, and um, so you also got that. <laughs> yes. Spells are uh, in Ataraxia, like especially like if you were if we we're talking about the elemental magic spells, um, purely designed for um, for offense actually, like for self defense or to wage war. So basically, they are all of destructive nature. That is their design. That is how they were designed uh, by the gods, and. Um, so the list of spells is actually not really long. The, uh, it's very, a very, very minor part of the whole book. Like, it's a pretty short, uh, short part because it is a sort of a um, similar like like a spell tree, but but not quite. So it's like um, each level up. Um, you you have you might uh, check the, the 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 spell list and uh, maybe there's a spell that on that level uh, that you can pick then you, you you write it down you pick that one um, sometimes there's even a choice of two or three spells on that specific level that you have to choose one from so you can't pick both. You have to choose one, or you can't pick all three. You have to pick one, and then next level up, you cannot pick any of those ones anymore. They're they're gone, and pick those again. You have to pick like another one, like from the next set. So um, each magic user usually has like a little bit of different set of spells uh, after their taste. Yes. Um. Huh. 
um, my uh, rough estimate for uh, the latest version is in fact uh, around a hundred and sixty pages probably maybe 180 160 it's, yes it's, yeah I think so That is uh, my plan. Um, if uh, I should succeed, then um, the idea is to have a release mid to end fall. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I want art. It was my pleasure. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, Mildra, thank you very much, um, and uh, until next time. <laughs>